everyone, welcome back. This is lecture 4 of material culture as a form of expression. Before we get started with this week's lecture, please make sure you have completed your quiz, um, that you also submitted your assignments that may be outstanding. You may also submit any questions or comments regarding the course thus far that you may have at any time to me. Thank you. A quick recap of last week's lecture. Physical or sociocultural location, which is in, um, the individual's environment and what they experience in that environment and who they interact with, it, with in that environment can result in the self-conscious expression of who they are, as well as what or who they identify with. We also discussed streetwear. We defined it and we characterized it as a way of claiming identity for people that feel as if they do not belong and it is their way as well of communicating who they are. And we also discussed the concept of stylization by Natal, where we also said that through stylization, a collective identity can be established as individuals from a certain area may wear certain garments similarly or be interested in specific brands or trends. Um, this is also a result of their physical or social cultural location. We will also look at more of collective identity in this lecture. Various garments paired together for individuals, daily outfits with aim of showing their individuality. We looked at this and how the way that you wear your garments um, shows who you are and shows your unique identity and therefore this is how you create your identity. And we also discussed how individuality can be an expression of group identity. We will be looking at that in more detail in this lecture. Our first theme for the lecture is going to be the theme of belonging. We're going to look at the concept of stylization by Natal, of which we've been looking at over the past few weeks. This is the concept that is based on the physical and sociocultural location of an individual. And stylization of oneself can be um, a sense of belonging that is created for those who felt misunderstood. For example, in South Africa, as we discussed last week, a variety of streetwear brands that are created in areas such as townships can achieve the sense of belonging through the provision of garments that are, according to them, deemed as accessible. Um, this is because then everyone within the township will then be able to access these garments and wear these garments and feel as though they belong to an area or belong to a group and therefore not misunderstood and at, as they were before. Therefore, accessibility is a key element in streetwear, which results in misfits finding their sense of belonging. Through them finding their sense of belonging, they then come together and create a collective identity, which we will look at in the next few slides. Next on the theme of belonging is the fact that evolution of trends as a reflection of the society during that particular period um, they, this creates then the brands and the brands then having an increase in interest in the creation of fashion that reflects a collective or group identity that then aims to create the sense of belonging for a group of people. As you can see, belonging as well as group identity are very interlinked and therefore um, group identity is an, ex is an extension of an individual self which thus results in them feeling a sense of belonging. This sense of belonging that is created by various brands is a type of, a type of um, identity element that is, um, that is one of the key reasons for the increasing rates of consumers in the fashion industry, especially amongst the youth as they will then buy a specific brand or specific or follow a specific trend in, in the, in the sense that they want to obviously belong to the group that creates that the group that looks that way or the group that wears that particular brand. Last week we looked as we looked at South Africa as um, one of our case studies, and we focused on the research that I had been doing um, for my honors, and we are going to continue with a little bit of that this week as well. So if we look at South Africa as a case study, we can see that there's a larger number of individuals that are including garments from areas they live in or local designers to their looks. 
Um, this is in order for them to extend their identity and show more of who they are. This was not really seen that much before as a lot of, um, a lot of individuals wanted to wear Western brands and international brands because they were most popular and more well known. Um, and they were the in thing. And now um, local brands are becoming more well known and are supplying more quality garments and therefore people are looking into wearing them a bit more and um, also for kids that live in the township for example when they see a really cool brand from there or a designer that they know they tend to wear those brands to show that they're from there as well and to show their support. Now with the increase of um, with the increase of the number of individuals that include the garments from their local designers to show their identity, there comes an increase in consumers for local designers, which then reflects the society's position at the moment of being more interested in making African fashion more well known. This then provides the accuracy of the group's sociological level theory. As the society has evolved from supporting Western trends and designers to supporting designers that are more relatable to who we are and what we experience. This is um, the, the group social sociological level theory is seen with a designer that we have looked at in the past few weeks, designer called Tebe Magugu. Tebe Magugu is a designer that we looked at specifically in lecture three. He is a, a South African designer who has been able to get his designs, which are largely inspired by the country's history, as well as present status, as each collection showcases women's ready-to-wear clothing and is a reflection of his understanding on various situations. In the next slide, I have provided some images of um, a couple of his collections and some shots that were taken for his collections. The influence of brands is seen through them being worn in areas which are bigger than where they were established, such as the streetwear brands being worn in suburban areas, where suburban kids will wear the streetwear brands to show that they identify with the streetwear in some type of way, and therefore showing a little bit more of who they are. And through Tevin Magugu, it's also seen through Tevin Magugu's brand being known as a luxury African brand. and um, this was a brand that was started in Pretoria in the township as well and is now being known as a luxury African brand, despite the fact that he um, collects his influence from the township where he grew up and his environment, as we have discussed in the previous lecture. And now his brand is being showcased at Paris Fashion Week. So this is just an example of how these brands then spread their influence and um, therefore share who they are in their culture with other areas and other spaces. Our next topic for this lecture is going to be collective identity. As I stated previously, collective identity as well as belonging are interlinked. They have a very close relationship and usually they res result in each other basically. So brands have an increasing interest in creating fashion and therefore that reflects a collective or group identity. As we said, designers gather influence from where they are and from the environment and how they grew up. And um, usually there's people that grew up in the same environment or that can relate to who they are or the spaces or something, uh, something you know, about the designer and hence the people buying their garments. And then this will then create a group identity as people now identify with this certain representation. As we said before, group identity is just an extension of the individual self and it, re it results in belonging. Group identity is not entirely who you are. It's just a part of who you are. Accessibility also creates collective identity. This is due to the fact that the more affordable your garments are, the more people that that more people that um, that you reach, more people will then buy your garments and this will then not limit people that perhaps come from a lower income group but still relate with your brand. 
Therefore, it's important to note that this type of identity is one of the key reasons for the increasing rate of consumers in the fashion industry. Collective identity also um, highlights clothing as a connective status. And um, therefore, this is because now your clothes communicate a multitude of messages, which include the wearer's social position and um, which may also display their financial position. Despite, um, despite the wearer's social position, are there any other perhaps message, are there any other, any other messages that you can think of that clothing communicates to us? Let me know in the comments or let me know in um, the group and we can discuss this further. With us continuing with South Africa as one of our case studies, we're going to look at the next topic, which is South African versus Western fashion as a form of material culture. Um, the come up of Tevin Magugu's brand and his establishment as an African luxury brand highlights Cassidy George's argument. Now, Cassidy George argues that currently there has been an increase in importance and evolution of African designers as well as their work. This can be seen in um, fashion shows internationally, such as the Paris Fashion Show, now including African designers, African luxury brands specifically such as Tebe Magugu, who showcased his brand in the past few weeks, actually. This can also be seen in international celebrities wearing some of the um, African luxury brand garments and posting on their social media to spread the influence. Now, the main contrast between Western and African designers is obviously capital, but however, it's also culture and the ethnic groups. And this goes on to highlight that fashion on an international scale is a contested subject in explorations of the body and spaces that the body occupies, um, which then also includes your culture and your heritage, capitalism, as well as power. These aspects can also influence how material culture, um, how fashion from these specific areas, thus being material culture, can be perceived. The contrasts also affect how fashion as um, material culture in Africa and the West is made and valued. Furthermore, it highlights the inevitable victimization of dominant economic and social processes by subordinate groups globally, nationally and locally on the culturally marginalized groups, even in fashion. So, to summarize the lecture, the, stylis the stylization of oneself can result in belonging, which can result in collective identity, as well as creation of own identity. Accessibility is key in establishment of collective identity. Collective identity is an extension of individual identity, and the contrast that exists with, between Western and African fashion impacts how both are seen and treated as material culture. Um, Thank you so much for attending this week's lecture and there will be a short little quiz this week as well for you to submit and I will see you next week.